stupid lemon chiffon cake recipe the people never tested. Ah! 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 What could possibly cause Ben Starr to throw such a tantrum? Let's go back a bit, shall we? Hey everybody, I'm Ben Starr, and today is my roommate Chris's birthday. And for his birthday cake, he wants the darkest, chocolatey, sinful cake that anybody has ever created in the universe. So today I'm making chocolate blackout cake. It's actually a historic recipe from a bakery in Brooklyn that's no longer operating. But it's an incredible cake full of dense, delicious, rich chocolate. So right here in the small saucepan, we're going to start the frosting. And the frosting is actually pudding. It's not really frosting. It's a rich, beautiful chocolate pudding. I've got a cup and a half of sugar. I've got a fourth cup of cornstarch. And uh, I have about a half teaspoon of salt. And to that, we're going to add two cups of half and half and a cup of milk. And we're going to heat this over about medium high, stirring it constantly until it thickens up. Okay, after about five or six minutes, this is going to start thickening up. And any foam that happened to gather up on the top of the pudding while you were stirring it is going to subside. You'll be able to see the actual surface of the pudding. And once that happens, it is time to add our chocolate. Now, I am going to assume the only time you will ever make this cake is for a special occasion. So do not go and buy Hershey's chocolate to put in this cake. That is the worst thing you can do. That stuff is not chocolate. Go to a good gourmet grocery store or a baking store and get yourself some Valrona chocolate. It's just about the best chocolate in the world. If you can't find Valrona, get Calibo. Of course, you've never heard of these brands because they are brands that only professional chefs and, and pastry chefs use. So get yourself some delicious Valrona or Calibo chocolate, cut it up, and add it to your pudding. Six ounces of chopped chocolate goes into the pudding, and I am using 80% cacao bittersweet chocolate by Valrona, and that is going to make the most sinful chocolate pudding frosting you've ever tasted. And our final ingredient, a couple of teaspoons of vanilla. Stir that in good. Now you want to prevent a skin from forming on your pudding. So just take some plastic wrap and press it right down onto the surface of that pudding. If you don't get it right on the surface, then condensation is going to collect on the plastic wrap and it's going to drip back onto your pudding, making it gross and disgusting. So press that right there onto the surface. Then plop this into the fridge until it's completely cool. That's going to take a couple hours. Okay, so now we're going to make the batter for the cake. I've got a stick of butter melting in this pan over medium heat. And to that, we're going to add three-fourths of a cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. We're going to stir that for a minute to really bloom the flavor of that cocoa. So next we're going to add a cup of buttermilk, which is one of my favorite ingredients. I love buttermilk. And we're going to add a cup of stale, dark coffee. And I love to pair coffee and chocolate together because they really complement each other's flavors. The cake's not really going to taste like coffee, but the coffee just deepens the flavor of the chocolate makes it delicious. Next, I'm going to add a cup of granulated sugar and a cup of packed light brown sugar. Now we're going to add two eggs to our mixture. And then we're going to add it to our dry ingredients, which in here I have 
cup and a half of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt. We're also going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. Now we're gently going to fold this together until we don't see any more dry ingredients. Okay, first we need to prepare our 8 inch cake pans. We're going to use two pans. And I'm going to show you a trick if you've never done this before. It's fantastic. We're going to line the bottom of our pan with parchment or wax paper. Only takes a couple of seconds and it makes sure that your cake is going to release perfectly without tearing when it comes time to unmold it. So just get yourself a square wax paper or parchment like this and you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again and then fold it up into a triangle, kind of like making a paper airplane and then fold it over again. So now you've got this little triangle just like that, right? You take your pan upside down, put the point of the triangle in about the center and then just cut right along the edge here, a little bit inside from the edge. And there you go, you have a perfect round for the bottom of your pan. So you're going to take your pan, spray the bottom of it with a little bit of cooking spray so that the parchment will release, then lay your parchment inside, nice perfect fit there, and spray the parchment and the sides. Then we're going to dust some cocoa powder into here to further help with the release. And then just repeat this with the other pan. All right, now we pour our cake batter into our pans. And it's going to be liquidy, don't worry, that is normal. That's going to rise into a really light, delicious cake. Once you've got your pans filled, bang them just a little bit on the countertop. This will make sure any trapped air bubbles in there come to the surface and break. You'll see them breaking. That is going to make sure that you have a perfectly even texture throughout your cake. And these are going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes until they test almost done. So I have a confession to make. Because I hate lying and I have lied to you twice today during this video. Okay. First of all, I didn't use Dutch processed cocoa. Because I was out, and I sent Chris to the grocery store to get some, and they were out. So I used regular cocoa, and it's not going to make any difference in the taste of the cake, but it's not going to come out like totally dark black, like a chocolate blackout cake. So I lied. But it's okay for you to use regular cocoa powder and not Dutch processed cocoa powder. It's going to still taste the same, it just won't be as dark. Okay, here's the second confession. This is not the first cake that we've baked today. <laughs> we started with some awful, like, crappy cookbook that I got at Barnes & Noble for like $2. And we were trying to bake a lemon chiffon cake, and I was following the recipe exactly as it stated. But it said that there was no baking powder and no egg whites in the cake. And how the heck is a cake supposed to rise? with no baking powder and no egg whites. Stupid lemon chiffon cake recipe that people never tested. Ah! 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 I mean, seriously. So we ended up with this and then some awful mousse thing that, that had a bunch of gelatin in it. And who puts gelatin in their mousse? It turned out like disgusting. So we had to bake a different cake. So, I've lied to you, I'm not as good a baker as I thought I was, I guess, because this, I mean, what even the heck is this? But, the chocolate blackout cake is going to turn out good, I promise. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Alright, the cakes are done 30 or 35 minutes. 
when a knife inserted into the center comes out clean without any streaks of batter, or if you just touch the center while it's still in the oven, it springs back a little bit. So when that happens, take them out, let them sit in the pan for 10 minutes to cool, then run a knife around the edge and just unmold. Perfect. Now, you pull the parchment or wax paper from off of the cake, and now they are ready to cool down. Now, the party starts in like one hour, and you cannot frost these cakes until they're completely cool. So what I'm going to do is put these in the freezer to chill for about an hour, then we're going to slice them, frost them, and serve it. Okay, so after the cake has firmed up in the fridge, what we're going to do is slice each cake into two. Now this works a lot better if you have a cake turntable or a Lazy Susan, but I don't have one, so I assume most of you don't have one, so I'm just going to show you how you do it. You're going to take a sharp knife, preferably a serrated one like this, and you cut just halfway, slice like that, and once you've got the knife blade all the way into the cake. You're just going to start kind of rolling the cake as you slice back and forth with the palm of your hand. Just kind of spread the cake. Always try to keep that knife blade level towards the ground so you're making an even slice. And then once you have met your slice on the other side, then just kind of work your way in very carefully. Continuing to turn the cake until the knife goes free all the way through. And then you've got two slices of cake. Repeat that with the other one for a total of four slices, but we're only going to be making a three layer cake. The fourth layer we're going to crumble up into little crumbs and press them all around the outside of the frosting. Okay, so once you've got both of your cake slices sliced in half, we get our frosting from the fridge. Take your plate that you're going to put it on, just put a little dollop of frosting there on the center, and that will hold the cake in place while you try to frost it, okay? So you're going to bring one layer over, and we're going to spoon about a, about a fourth of our frosting onto the cake, like that, and then just kind of spread it out. Again, this is actually pudding that we're using as our frosting. But it's good. Okay. Then, second layer. Another fourth of our frosting. The nice thing about pudding frosting is that it spreads much easier than traditional frosting. Okay. Now, our third layer. fourth of our frosting. And now we're going to pour the rest of the frosting all around the outside of the cake like this. And we'll take our knife and just kind of push it over the edge and then Smear it along. Okay, so just basically tear and crumble the cake up until it is completely disintegrated. Okay, so once you have your cake crumbled, you take your crumble pieces and you sprinkle them on top of the pudding frosting. Again, I did not make up this recipe. It is a legendary recipe from a bakery in Brooklyn. And the recipe's been featured in the New York Times and in Time Magazine, and everybody apparently just went wild for this cake before the bakery closed its doors and the family decided they'd had enough of the bakery business. So, once you have got your cake pressed all around, Get it good and set in that pudding frosting so it doesn't go crazy when you cut it. And 
Now, clean up the sides just a little bit. And you have chocolate blackout cake. It is guaranteed to send you into a chocolate-induced coma in about three seconds.